Folks, we are pretty much done our discussion of zeros. It was a long one. Hopefully it was as much fun for you as it was for me. We are still going to touch on uh, some items related to zeros on the last several pages of the quadratic section, but the bulk of our zeros discussion is complete. We now need to talk about the quadratic forms. We introduced these on the very first page of the quadratic section. There were three forms, standard form, vertex form, and intercept or factored form. And what we need to talk about right now is how we can look at these forms and either just by looking at the form or by knowing certain expressions, um, I guess you could call them formulas, we can extract certain information from these forms. On every single SAT, there's always a question or two that maybe gives you vertex form and then says which of the following forms shows the x-intercepts of the parabola, or maybe the question shows you a standard form and then says which of the following uh, equivalent function sh shows the vertex of the parabola for that and other reasons. It is important that we understand what the forms are giving us and what we can extract from the form. So right here we are going to start with extracting information from standard form. Remember that standard form is that ax squared plus bx plus c. I've said several times that that form is often the one that students are most familiar with. So what we're going to do is we're going to run very quickly, hopefully very quickly, through this table here and we're going to talk about all of the things that we can do with standard form all the information we can extract from standard form. We already talked about how to find zeros from standard form. We said that there were several methods. We have factoring, we have the quadratic formula, we have the calculator methods. Those are all covered in previous parts of this quadratic section. We can determine the sum of the zeros. Remember I said we'd, we'd still be talking about zeros a little bit. Uh, we can determine the sum of the zeros by taking b over a, the ratio of b, over a or b to a and putting a negative in front of that fraction. We can determine the product of the zeros by taking our c, our constant term, and putting c over a. We can determine the y-intercept of the parabola simply by visual inspection. So this is one where we don't have to do anything to this equation to see the y-intercept. We can simply look at the given standard form equation and whatever the value is in this c position will be the y-intercept. That should be pretty obvious why that is, no pun intended. It's because remember we find our y-intercept by throwing in x equals zero, by throwing in zero for x. So if I have a function in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, and I throw in zero for those x's, this term goes away, this term goes away. So when x equals zero, y equals c. So zero comma c is the y-intercept of the parabola. So again, the y-intercept of the parabola is something that we can just see from standard form. If you do see a question that says which of the following equations shows the y-intercept of the parabola, very likely the answer that you need is just going to be the answer that gives the quadratic in standard form. The orientation of the parabola, we can tell whether the parabola is oriented opening up or oriented opening down by the sign on the A term. If the A is positive, so again, uh, A is positive, we have the smiley face sort of parabola. If A is negative, we have the sad face parabola. Do also note that the smiley face means that the vertex is a minimum and the sad face, the frown, means that the vertex is a maximum. The x-coordinate of the vertex, if we're looking at standard form, we can get the x-coordinate of the vertex by taking b, putting b over 2 times a, and putting a negative in front of it. So negative b over 2a is the x-coordinate of the vertex. The y-coordinate of the vertex we can get by simply taking the value of negative b over 2a and plugging negative b over 2a into our function to find 
the y value. So once we get the x coordinate of the vertex, negative b over 2a, we can just evaluate the function by throwing in negative b over 2a for our x values. And then of course the number of real zeros, we already talked about this. Uh, this has to do with the discriminant. We did discuss this on a previous page. The discriminant will tell us whether we have one, two, or no real zeros. If the discriminant is negative, no real. If the discriminant equals zero, one real. If the discriminant is positive, is greater than zero, two real. Now, in terms of all of this information, I guess the question is, do we memorize all of this? My answer would be yes. If you are going for a phenomenally good score on this test, which I'm assuming you want, or else you wouldn't be uh, watching this video or doing this program altogether, if you want a very good score, yeah, it's a good idea to have this stuff memorized or at least know how to derive some of this stuff. For instance, these few things here, um, this comes from the quadratic formula. I'm not going to work through how this comes from the quadratic formula, but if you know the quadratic formula, you would know that when you add the two solutions, so you're going to get negative b over a. If you multiply the two solutions, you'll get c over a. So there are ways to derive this information. Having said that, yeah, it probably would be good to make sure that you have this stuff memorized. So if you want to make flashcards or if you just want to read this page over and over and over again, probably would be good to have this stuff down cold. Down at the bottom of the page, we're going to run through a bunch of examples on which we use the information in the chart above example 25 to determine all of these items. So we have, and by the way, you should run through these on your own before watching me do these. These should not be all that difficult. Sum of the zeros, remember that the sum of the zeros is negative b over a. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna list over here my a, my b, and my c value so I don't have to keep looking back at this um, equation. So I have the negative two, the positive 16, the negative 38. So negative b, over a is going to equal negative 16 over negative two, and I'm gonna make those positive and I get eight. So my sum of the zeros here is eight. The product of the zeros, remember from the chart, the product of the zeros is c over a. In this case, we have negative 38 over negative two, and I'm not allowed to use my calculator here, so I'm gonna to need to know that 38 divided by two is 19. So the product of the zeros is going to be 19. The coordinates of the y-intercept, remember that the y-intercept is simply the c value, and my c value is negative 38. So the coordinates of the y-intercept are going to be 0, comma, negative 38. x coordinate 0, y coordinate negative 38. The coordinates of the vertex, remember that for the coordinates of the vertex we do negative b over 2a. In our case, that is going to be negative 16 over two times negative two, and that's negative 16 over negative four. Turn these positive, and what do we get? We get four. So the coordinates of the vertex here, uh, the x coordinate is going to be four. So all I am going to do to find the, the y coordinate at the vertex, remember I just need to take this four and plug the four in for x in the g of x function. So basically what I'm doing is I'm finding g of four. That's going to give me the y value at the vertex. So this is negative two times four squared plus 16 times four minus 38. It would be nice to be able to use the calculator here, but I cannot. So this is negative two times 16, that's negative 32, plus the 64 minus the 38. This is gonna not come out to be too tough here. Negative 34 plus 60, negative 32 plus 64 is gonna be positive 32 minus 38, which should be negative six. So the coordinates of my vertex here are gonna be negative six. Is the vertex a minimum or maximum? Remember that the way that we determine whether the vertex is a minimum or maximum is by looking at the a value and more specifically the sign on a the sign on a is negative which means this is a frown which means that this uh, parabola has a maximum its vertex is a maximum so that vertex for negative six is at the very top negative uh, sorry for negative 
six is at the very top of the parabola. At how many points does the graph intercept the x axis? Well, remember for that we use the discriminant. Uh, we find out what b squared minus 4ac is, and in our case, b squared minus 4a and c. That looks a little complicated. Uh, 16 squared, we probably should have that memorized. That's 256. Uh, minus, 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 which means we have a minus. This is 8 times 38. I'm going, I'm going to do that just with this long multiplication here. Um, could do 8 times 40 and then subtract 16, but let's do it this way. So this is uh, 64, 8 times 3 is 24. So that's 304, 256 minus 304. That's definitely going to be negative, uh, which means that my discriminant is negative, which means this parabola will not intersect the x-axis at all. Obviously, we could confirm, we could confirm this by, and again, we're not allowed to use our calculator here, but just to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes on this particular question, 2x squared plus 16x minus 38. I'm going to graph that and indeed you can already sort of see uh, let's actually zoom out here and see if we can see this parabola at all zoom out there we go the parabola is down there below the x-axis does not touch the x-axis at all and therefore this parabola will not have any x intercepts it will have no real solutions and no x intercepts at the top of the next page, we just have to discuss one more brief thing before we move on to intercept form, and that is converting from standard form to other forms. We've already talked about converting from standard form to intercept form. Remember, we went through the process of factoring standard form to get a intercept or factored form. So that's one of the primary ways that we get from standard form to intercept form. We can also convert standard form to vertex form, which involves completing the square. It's a process that we are not going to go over right now, mostly because you almost will never need to do it on this test, especially because if you want the coordinates of the vertex, you don't have to get to vertex form because remember, we just talked about the fact that we can get the X and the Y coordinates of the vertex with these little hints here from the table on the previous page. So there's not always going to be, or I should say, not really ever going to be a major need to convert standard form to vertex form. If you need to do it and you know how to complete the square, then by all means, go ahead and complete the square and convert. Um, and we will most likely do a separate, in a separate video, we will most likely cover completing the square, but uh, again, probably should be able to get away with just using the hints from the previous page to figure out the vertex from standard form.